right button. <laughs> It's such a joy to watch former allies turned rivals and enemies reunite, and the best moment in the vein of something like that has to be Gintoki teaming up with Takasugi once more. The two have had a long history, and their rivalry is actually one of the biggest things that makes the story of Gintama so captivating for me. After seeing all that they've gone through, seeing them team up again and save each other's comrades got me out of my seat and they didn't come alone. I just love the mistrust and tension that exists among the members. Just because someone helps you, it doesn't mean you're automatically buddies with him already. Still, it's a dream reunion and a dream team up waiting to happen, and after more than 300 episodes, we finally got it. I know technically speaking, this wasn't the first time they teamed up with each other. That moment is still one of my favorite moments in Gintama, but it wasn't really much of a fight, was it? So I went with this one instead. A perfect moment with the perfect music playing in the background. Now that's how you make a cliffhanger. <laughs> A good rival is someone who serves as the perfect foil, and who better to serve as the laid-back Yo Asakura's rival than the very intense go-getter Tao Ren. Shaman King is one of the first shows that helped me get accustomed to the rival dynamic in anime, as well as the concept of foils, so the moment where they take on Tao Yuan is an extra special climax in my opinion. The whole arc's been one very important one for Ren, and made him one of my favorite characters at that time. It's a given that key rivals in shonen anime get a whole arc or two devoted to developing them, but Ren's journey is something that I resonated with as an elementary student back then. To see him finally take the stand and fight alongside his eternal rival first true friend was a joy to watch. The best news about this fight? Shaman King is coming back, so you can now look forward to seeing the remastered version of this fight. <laughs> Our next moment is probably the biggest one among these moments in sheer scale in the medium battle in Magi. I didn't mention any specific character for this moment because this is a fight that involves all kingdoms in the world of Magi. It started with an invasion on Mage Kingdom, then the Coral Empire comes in with its best warriors, and even Sinbad and the Seven Seas Alliance come into the picture and show off a lot of their flashy abilities one after another. Oh yeah, and did I mention that all these kingdoms have tensions with each other? This is truly a grand moment that deserves to be the series grand finale in the anime adaptation. The world of Magi is just full of so many interesting political dynamics and battles of ideals, but seeing everyone put their differences aside for the sake of the world is just amazing and heartwarming. I wanted to place this fight a bit higher, but I can't because for all the stunning visuals this one has and the implications it has on the story moving forward, the fight is actually quite repetitive. It's just people spamming extreme magic one after another on the medium that no sells it before someone else comes in and does the same. Rinse and repeat until the medium finally goes down right when almost every named character has entered the scene. Remember Yu-Gi-Oh! Yugi and Gaiba have such a storied rivalry that it's amazing to see how well they actually work well in the battle against Loomis and Umbra. Granted, work well is more of looking at the end result. For most of the admittedly long duel, Yugi and Gaiba just can't seem to get along. In a tag duel like the one they had, not getting along or not playing along with your partner is just so costly. We can thank the fact that they're main characters, otherwise I doubt that any random duo would last that long against the Mask Bros teamwork. The notable thing about this is that despite all the tension and bickering between the two, Yugi and Gaiba actually have good reads on each other's plans, and the duel reaches its climax with some unexpected sacrifice official plays for the greater good, from Yugi's arrogant rival nonetheless. As the fight progresses, we can see team chemistry slowly shifting from one team to another. Through teeth-clenched teamwork, the pair manages to win the duel in an awesome way, with the summoning of one of the Egyptian gods.
Things are about to get heated up in our next fight, Natsu and Gargiel versus Laxus. Up to this day, I still find the battle of Fairy Tail arc of Fairy Tail one of my favorites in the entire series. The series has come a long way and I still think that the first few arcs of Fairy Tail are still amazing in comparison to the latter ones. One of my favorite moments from old school Fairy Tail comes in the form of Natsu teaming up with the previous arc's arch nemesis in Gargiel. I like this rival team up due to the tension in it. Up until this point, all goodwill and trust that Gargiel's gotten from his new guild are of the begrudging type. Gargiel's a true wild card in this, especially considering the scenes prior to the battle. However, when the time comes to turn the tides of the decisive battle, who else better to answer the call than the same Dragon Slayer that gave Natsu so much trouble two arcs prior? The two would later team up against two other Dragon Slayers, but I gave this moment the nod because I feel it's more memorable. After all, when the tag battle happened, Gargiel had already long become a mainstay ally and a member of Fairy Tail. In this one, you can still feel the teeth clenched teamwork and the animosity between him and Natsu. Plus, this fight had a more epic finish. As we approach the tail end of the list, I think it's about time to feature one hell of a climax in Atsushi and Aku Dagawa versus Francis. What a way to end the second season of Bungo Stray Dogs. Two eternal rivals that have been going at each other for so long as I can remember, finally getting the team up for a lifetime as they take on Francis atop the Moby Dick. A fight as epic and hyped as this is just the perfect way to send off yet another excellent season. The fight itself is cool, but what I like the most about this is the character development at work for both Atsushi and Aku Dagawa. It's a fight that showcases the resolve and growth they've gone through as characters and it shows that if they work together cohesively their powers actually make a pretty damn good combination. This is probably one of the best team ups for me and I got goosebumps seeing Atsushi and Akutagawa work together as the epic opening blares in the background. The top rivalry in the new generation of mainstream shonen has to be Deku and Bakugo. I don't think that anything from the currently running mainstream shonen can compare to the history of these two and how intertwined their fates are. Fans who watched My Hero Academia Heroes Rising got a big and cathartic treat in the form of their final battle against Nine. It's a fight that the duo lost earlier in the movie, but as you know, such defeats are but minor setbacks for our plucky shonen heroes. As such, they take another crack at it much later in the movie. The fight's pretty much what you'd expect from a climactic fight in My Hero Academia, but with one very important addition that ties up Deku and Bakugo's rivalry really well. The power that Bakugo had wanted for so long finally comes to his grasp. One for all, the crux of the two's rivalry and tension finally gets transferred to Bakugo. The visual of Bakugo using Detroit Smash alongside Deku is one of the moments that I'll forever remember. Runner up on the list, we have Goku and Vegeta versus Broly. Name a pair of rivals more iconic than good old Goku and Vegeta. Given the long history and how much the two have codified themselves as top rivals in anime history, finding an answer to that would be difficult. That's why everyone collectively lost their shit when they teamed up to take on an even bigger foe in Broly. The team up is what makes the Broly movie so memorable. When Vegeta was first introduced, anyone savvy enough with anime would know that it would only take little time for him to become one of those reluctant allies of the good guys, but to see him fight alongside Goku in this capacity was simply breathtaking. For someone as strong as Broly, it would take nothing less than the combined might of the two most iconic Dragon Ball characters to take him down, and we got ourselves a battle for the ages. Actually, there is a pair of rivals that are just as, if not even more iconic than Goku and Vegeta, and they are Naruto and Sasuke. The rivalry between the two has been the major driving point of the entire series, so seeing them team up in Boruto creates a rather interesting dynamic. For one, they're adults now. It's a completely different dynamic that they have compared to when they were the angsty and emotional teens that were in the whole run of Naruto. Now, as adults, the fight gives us a longing sense of how times passed us by while tickling our nostalgia goggles by 
are showing off the two characters' signature abilities. Along with us, Naruto and Sasuke have come a long way from where they were in the previous series. This is one of the shining points of Boruto's much criticized anime, and I don't think that the nostalgia alone is the prime reason for it. That would be a disservice to the amazing animation team in this fight, who brought their A plus game for this moment. The fight carries with it a sense of much needed continuity and nostalgic progression, which is mainly why I picked this fight to top the list.